Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. Hey. Happy Tuesday. Hope you had a wonderful morning so far. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people going back to school, or at least yeah. if they're not officially back in school, uh, the teachers are getting the classrooms <laughs> ready this week. So very busy for a lot of people yes. out there. Yes, thanks so much for joining us right now at 9 o'clock. And obviously, like she mentioned, if people are going to and fro, wherever they're going, they're not wearing long sleeves for sure. Oh, no. <laughs> Let's get no. to meteorologist Justin Orr, man. You know, earlier this morning, we were talking about how intimidating it was, you know, especially looking out there right now. Uh, with the temperatures, but hey. <laughs> Already. Yeah, I know. It looks beautiful, but it's hot. And you guys mentioned back to school. If if you went to elementary school here in Texas, you know the first like three months you go back to school, it's still really hot, still shorts and t-shirts. Uh, that will certainly be the case today, especially for those schools that are have already started back, including uh, Natalia out there towards Lavernia. Let's take a look outside right now. We've got uh, mostly clear skies as we look down uh, towards downtown. 83, that temperature is now on the rise. 79 New Braunfels, 83 in Converse, 77 in Bernie and Kerrville. And as we look at the high temperatures for today, uh, we're thinking around 100. Most places will be right around that triple digit mark. Uh, I guess if there's any bit of good news here is that humidity levels will start to drop off during the afternoons and that'll keep heat index values from getting too out of control. It'll still be hot. I mean, hot is hot, but uh, thankfully we're not talking about heat index values up above 105. We've had 12 days this year of 100 or above. I think we add to that today and really throughout this week. Now, last year at this time, we had 40. Just to give you some perspective, we ended up with 75. Uh, so things are much better this go around. And uh, I, th I think we're going to see, uh, again, several triple digit days this week. We've also got some activity out there in the Caribbean we got to talk about. What does it mean for our forecast? We'll look into that coming up in just a couple minutes. But now let's check out the roadways and Transguide. How are things looking? Thank you, Justin. Well, on uh, the TxDOT website, it looks like there's only minor construction. Uh, that's several, like the I-10 area that it has been under construction. But this shot here at I-35 at Walsham, looking good this morning. And I believe some of the accidents that happened earlier in the morning have, have cleared so far. Our top story at 9, CNN is reporting that Vice President Kamala Harris has made her choice for a running mate in the 2024 presidential election. Harris has reportedly chosen Minnesota Governor Tim Walz as her pick for vice president. He bid out a number of candidates, such as Arizona Senator and former astronaut Mark Kelly and Pennsylvania Josh Shapiro for the job. Harris will make that announcement official about her pick later tonight. Well, this morning services are being held to remember Meredith Bordillo, the Bear County Sheriff's deputy who lost her life in a crash more than two weeks ago. Our very own Devin Carp is live outside of the Cornerstone Church where Meredith Portillo's family, friends, and fellow law enforcement officers will say their goodbyes. Good morning, Devin. Good morning, Jaffney. If you look behind me, you can see some of the Bear County Sheriff's deputies working together with other first emergency responder crews to honor Meredith's life. Take a look at them as they're working to raise that flag here. Now, Portillo was just 20 years old who had been working as a deputy for less than a year when she started with the Sheriff's Office in September and graduated from the Detention Officer Academy in January. Now, Portillo was among three people who were killed after a wrong way driver crashed into her car just over two weeks ago. Now, we're going to be working to live stream the service that's happening at 10 o'clock on our website and our platforms at ksat.com. But for now, I'm going to send it back to you guys. Devin Karp, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Devin. Here's today's 9 at 9. The Bear County Sheriff's Office is concerned about a growing problem across San Antonio. Young people throwing house parties in vacant homes in new communities. The latest one happened on Saturday night and it ended with a 17-year-old being shot and killed. Sheriff Javier Salazar says there was about 100 people invited through social media and they're trying to narrow down a suspect. President Joe Biden is calling for major Supreme Court reforms. He's pushing for a constitutional amendment, stripping the president of immunity for crimes committed while in office, 18-year term limits for Supreme Court justices, and a binding code of conduct for the high court. The proposals, which stand little chance with a divided Congress, receive swift criticism from Republicans on Capitol Hill. The proposed changes come as polling indicates support for the court is hovering near historic lows. What's left of Hurricane Debbie is dumping historic amounts of rain up to 30 inches possible in some areas as it climbs up the coast of Georgia. The mayor of Savannah issued a curfew warning the flood could mean, quote, obliteration for parts of the city. 
while Charleston could get more than 20 inches of rain. Debbie made landfall along the Gulf Coast of Florida as a Category 1 hurricane, leaving streets underwater and homes without power. So far, Debbie is blamed for at least four deaths in Florida. Today, Japan marks 79 years since the atomic bombing of Hiroshima. At a memorial, Japanese leaders urged world leaders to stop relying on nuclear weapons as a deterrent and take immediate action towards their abolishment. The atomic bomb dropped by the United States on Hiroshima on August 6, 1945, destroyed the city, killing 140,000 people, and a second bomb dropped three days later on Nagasaki, killing an additional 70,000. Ceremony attendees marked a minute's silence at 8.15 a.m. Japan time. That's when the bomb was dropped 79 years ago. As fast as stocks slid on Monday, they could be ready for a rebound. Japan's Nikkei index soaring 11% a day after dropping 12%. Wall Street futures pointing to a higher open. Monday saw U.S. stocks tumble, the Dow closing down 2.6%. The Nasdaq shed nearly 3.5%, and the S&P had its worst day in nearly two years, dropping 3%. The Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago president is trying to reassure investors after recession fears caused days of market chaos. He says that the likelihood of a rate cut by the Fed in response to recent market trends is not likely. The point of keeping interest rates high is to cool the economy enough to bring down inflation. Right now, the GDP indicates a pretty good economy. The Fed has another meeting scheduled for about six weeks from now, and it could cut rates then. Texas closing its San Francisco office. Elon Musk is reportedly shutting down the office, which served as headquarters since 2012 when it was Twitter. He recently said he wanted to move the main office to Texas. Employees in California will be able to relocate to San Jose and an office in Palo Alto. Apple Safari gets a new feature. Distraction control allows users to hide pop-ups and parts of websites. People can select items to hide, but ads will not be permanently removed. The feature can also be used to hide some autoplay videos. It's available in the newest update. Zac Efron is assuring his fans he's okay after reports he was briefly hospitalized in Spain on Friday. A representative for the star of The Iron Claw and A Family Affair says it was a precaution after a minor swimming incident at a hotel pool. Efron posted on Instagram that he's happy and healthy and that he's thankful for all the well wishes that he's received. And that's today's Nine at Nine. This morning, the three American prisoners who returned home late last week have been discharged from the Brook Army Medical Center. Evan Gershkovich, Al Su, Kermer Shafa, and Paul Whelan landed at Joint Base Andrews on Thursday night as a part of the prisoner swap with Russia. From there, they were flown to San Antonio, where they had medical evaluations in Bamsi. Well, they are records that Lavernia Independent School District did not want you to see a financial arrangement between the district and a top administrator that kept him on the payroll for four and a half months after he was placed on leave. It's a mystery that our KSAT investigates team has been trying to get to the bottom of. It is a serious issue when the district is essentially giving away public monies and receiving nothing in return. Lavernia's superintendent declined a request to be interviewed about the decision to continue paying Duffick while on leave for well over four months. In an interview with KSAD in the fall of 2020, Cohn told us, quote, whether we like it or not, we have to tell the story for what it is and be completely honest, whether it's about finances or what a teacher did or what a superintendent did. It's about communicating. Well, KSET investigates Dylan Collier joins us this morning. And Dylan, can you just go ahead and walk us through that agreement? Sure. And this has been uh, a project that we've been working on for several months. Uh, the center of this is a resignation and release agreement that was signed by Dr. Michael Duffick about six weeks after he was put, pay, placed on paid administrative leave. Duffick agreed to not file any claims against the district. In exchange, Lavernia agreed to keep him on the payroll through the end of April, meaning he collected four and a half months of salary for not showing up to the office. I know this is a complicated case that you guys have been trying to crack, but I think the biggest question a lot of people are having is why was he placed on leave to begin with? So we've been able to 
put some of the pieces together. The district has taken steps to keep that information from us. They appealed our initial request for Duffick's personnel file to the Texas Attorney General, and even after the district was ordered to release the files this summer, they still didn't include any records on the complaint that led to him being placed on leave. In fact, they removed those records from his file and placed them in a folder marked confidential. And to the state, we still don't have a copy of the original complaint or complaints. We do know it was an investigation. It involved another employee of the district who still works for Lavernia ISD. And it includes, according to the district, this is their wording, highly embarrassing facts. Hmm. And the full story is, of course, on KSAT.com. And uh, yeah, the web article will be up in just a few minutes. And then the full investigation airs uh, tonight on the night beat. All right. Thank you so much, Dylan. Thanks for joining us. And again, Case that Investigates is full district secrecy tonight on the Night Beat. Mm -hmm. Time now is 9.08. Of course, still ahead on GMSA at 9. Major concert coming to the Frostbank Stadium, but who will be taking the stage? We're going to talk about it next. Welcome back. It's 9.12. Well, today we are waiting on a major Frostbank Center concert announcement that's supposed to be made later this morning at 10 a.m. So the Rock at La Cantera is going to host the special announcement party on Frost Plaza and make the reveal on the LED screen. So fans in attendance can expect a listening party following the announcement. The party is free and open to the public. Mm -hmm. So also, we're still trying to let you guys weigh in on this. We want to know what you think the special act is going to be. We got some options right there. You've been voting in this poll all day long. So far, a boy Eminem coming in <laughs> with the Godzilla. Uh, he's coming in with 30%. We got the U.S. Gymnastics Tour at 20%. Uh, Kendrick Lamar, 24% in third place. And then the River City Rock Fest. Ooh! 26 percent. It's pretty even across the board. Yeah, yeah. it's actually pretty pretty split up. I mean, but yeah, <laughs> Eminem's in the lead. We just saw him, didn't he? Like he performed before a fight on Saturday. Yeah. Oh, did he? Oh, yeah, already. Oh. <laughs> and, and just to be clear, we have no idea. So these are just they're guesses. Random guesses. options, yeah. yeah. Uh, we or, don't know what it will be. Or hopes or wishes. <laughs> yeah. See, Eminem, like I say, I'm an Eminem fan, but the River City Rock Fest, what does that include? Is that like just a bunch of rock, rock bands? bands? Yeah. <laughs> like, well, yeah. Or hair, hair bands, I guess. Rock bands okay. slash hair bands. Well, yeah, I, 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 was, oh, oh, I was talking to, to one of our editors. Yeah, you've seen like Nine Inch Nails and then, you know, oh. the, the, the rock oh. and metal. Voices thing. in my head. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah, like we just, we just got a vote for uh, River City. Okay, okay. okay. Oh, Eminem just lost. <gasps> oh, man, you only had one shot. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Either way, I, this is a very interesting deal. I cannot wait to see what the result is actually going to be. We've got about 45 minutes. We'll find out. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, a reminder, the Rock at La Cantera is located at One Spurs Way, just in case. Okay. Mm -hmm. So is that typically a place where a lot of people have those concerts and stuff like that? Uh, Frost Bank? Yeah. I mean, uh, it's one of our bigger venues. So okay. uh, you, you would expect that it would be, you know, Something yes. everyone's excited about. Hey. We'll and, it, and it's indoors. Okay. But yeah. they'll have like a, will the build, building be lit up? Am I thinking about the right building? <laughs> I don't oh, know. The, the oh, tower. I'm thinking yeah, about the, the wrong building. Yeah, no, the Prospect, yeah, so the Prospect Center, like, well, well I mean, there's like lights for the Spurs game. Okay. Like it'll, be, but, yeah. it'll, it'll be lit on the inside. Okay, yeah, so I got you. Y'all are still getting acclimated. Do not yes. be out there judging me, okay? No, no. <laughs> Just keep voting. Keep yeah, yes, keep voting yes. for sure. Uh, yeah, you're right about, though, uh, wanting to be indoors because this heat's, uh, it's no joke. And we're starting to see things really kind of ramp up here as far as temperatures go. Uh, first, though, I'm going to start off with Debbie. You remember Debbie? Uh, uh, it made a uh, big impact in Florida yesterday. It has advanced towards Georgia. It's over Savannah right now. And you're getting some good rain bands still coming out around South Carolina. So this is the place where you're going to get some pretty heavy rain. Winds are still at 45 miles per hour. And uh, this is moving northeast at about 6 miles per hour. So it's a slow mover. This thing's going to drift. And we're becoming increasingly concerned about really bad flooding here uh, that could be really dangerous. Uh, we're talking 15 inches plus. I've seen some estimates that are talking about 25 inches of rain. Okay, that's two feet of rain. Uh, anywhere from Raleigh, Jacksonville, Wilmington, down to Charleston. Uh, this is not an area you want to travel to or deal with over the next several days. And we've been checking in on the flight delays. Haven't seen many. Uh, there were a ton yesterday because of uh, its impacts on Florida. Uh, so far, this hasn't affected some of the bigger hubs, but I would still definitely check ahead. Places like Charlotte could start to see some delays as uh, heavier rain uh, works in there. Hey, we got to talk about a new potential tropical system. It's down, way, uh, down there in the southern Caribbean. Uh, nothing yet. This is not really much of anything, but the models are indicating that as it gets into warmer waters, 
our, our more conducive environment, I should say, for development. There could be some development there. 30% chance is what the Hurricane Center is putting on it right now. Uh, the key points here, if, if it, it does develop, it would be slow. And it's much true to talk about any impacts for us or the Gulf of Mexico. Could it get into the Gulf of Mexico? Sure. Uh, will it affect South Texas? Way too early to tell. Uh, we'll keep you posted. But uh, if it does get a name eventually somewhere down the line, it would be Ernesto. Uh, Francine and Gordon are followed by Helene, Isaac, Joyce, Kirk, Leslie, Milton, and Nadine. Uh, I think we could get through quite a few of these names this year because, uh, yes, it is forecast to be a busy year. And so far, it's it's been fairly busy. As we go outside for you right now, 83 here in San Antonio, 82 New Braunfels, 77 in Bernie, 78 in Kerrville. And we've got uh, mostly clear skies for most of us. Uh, you look at the heat index, it's already starting to ramp up there. So if you're going outside right now, maybe you're mowing the lawn mid-morning. Uh, know that uh, the heat index is already in the low 90s. And that's the case down in Stinson. And this number is only going to go up. Keep in mind, uh, the heat index it gets really bad sort of like midday because you still have high humidity at that point and the temperatures are really starting to rise. It's a bad combination. By the afternoon, humidity actually falls off a little bit, but of course the temperatures uh, really skyrocket. So it's all a trade-off. Just know that by 1 o'clock we're probably going to see heat indices closing in on 100, and by the afternoon we can see a heat index 103 to 104 with a high temperature right around 100. And the extended forecast here uh, doesn't really change much. Our ridge pipe pressure is still going to be uh, really taking hold of our forecast. It'll wobble around a little bit, but actually move in a little bit closer by Thursday and Friday, and that's when we could see some of our hottest temperatures. Triple digits are a sure thing. By Saturday, though, there is a weak frontal boundary that tries to work in from the north and east. That may be just enough to touch off a shower or storm by Saturday and Sunday. Don't get your hopes up. Rain chances aren't huge, but at least it's something uh, because there are a ton of numbers in the seven day forecast, and that's not exactly what we would hope for. Uh, it had been so good. <laughs> Uh, and now August wow. it, and it's uh, it's a little rough, but we'll get through it. All those zeros, <laughs> 100, like, come on, man. That's, That's a lot of numbers. It is, so hey, just get mm -hmm. in the pool, y'all can. Yes. All right, time now is 918. Temperature looking at about 83 degrees. Well, the economy is showing signs of improvement, but that doesn't mean you should forget those smart shopping tips are going to have the latest next. Welcome back. It's 921. Well, prices and interest rates are expected to go down. However, experts say it isn't important, though, to maintain frugal shopping practices, especially if you're saving up for something special. ABC's Rena Roy shows us how to shop smarter as the market gets better. After months of high costs, we're finally seeing some relief with retailers like Target, Walmart, and Ikea announcing their slashing prices. Right now, we are seeing a number of larger national retailers announcing that they're reducing prices on certain items, especially essential items. So ultimately, our shopping will be less expensive than it's been. We're also expecting an interest rate reduction by the end of the year, but still smart shopping expert Trey Bodge says we should stay mindful of our spending habits. So many shoppers have become very good at saving. And so what I hope is that as prices come down, consumers will still continue to utilize those frugal shopping practices. You can save even more for a rainy day, for a vacation, for retirement, college education. Bodge recommends temporarily foregoing what she calls little luxuries. Things like like manicures or if you're paying for someone to clean your home, mow your lawn, clean your car. If you are physically able, you could forego those for a little while and you will save up very quickly for that thing that you're saving for. She says opting for generic instead of brand names or buying secondhand items can help save money. Also keeping an eye out for special deals that apply to certain groups like students, teachers or seniors. There are also apps that automatically scour the web for coupons. Just doing something as simple as installing a browser extension on your computer. For example, the Sidekick by Coupon Cabin, once you install it, it takes about 10 seconds, it will automatically look for savings opportunities for you and even run coupons for you at checkout. That's one of those very easy ways that you can save as you're shopping. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. So if you're a first time home buyer, listen up. Home builders are tending to make smaller, more affordable homes to cater to you. In 2023, the median Siegel family home built was just over 2,200 square feet. 
That is down 9% from the 2015 peak season. Over that time, many formal dining rooms and bonus rooms disappeared. Now, according to an NAHB survey, 17% of home builders said they built homes on smaller lots in 2023 to support home sales. 14% said they built more townhomes. CrowdStrike is firing back at Delta after the airline's CEO lashed out at the cybersecurity firm for costing it hundreds of millions of dollars. A CrowdStrike software update on July 19th caused widespread computer outages at Delta and hundreds of other companies around the globe, including several newsrooms. Delta is threatening public litigation and accuses CrowdStrike of not helping during the meltdown. But in a letter, CrowdStrike's legal counsel rejected any allegations that the company was, quote, grossly negligent or committed willful misconduct. Delta was forced to cancel about 30% of its schedule over the five days, stranding about 500,000 passengers. And lawmakers want to help protect consumers from scams linked to popular payment apps like PayPal, Venmo, and Zelle. That's because lawmakers say they're too easy for scam artists to use as a way to defraud users. In the last few years, losses from bank transfer and payment fraud scams have spiked nearly 150%, according to federal data. And last year alone, consumers reported losing $210 million to scammers on payment apps. That is 62% more than two years ago. It is now 925. It's 83 degrees outside. Again, we're still asking everybody to stay hydrated out there. We got more ahead on GMSA at 9. Including a new Texas plan to fast track veterans and first responders into the classroom. It's having some trouble getting off the ground. However, we're going to learn how it's still making a difference. Plus, Tropical Storm Debbie may no longer be a hurricane strength, but folks in the southeast still have plenty to be worried about. Details in the next half hour. Good morning. Welcome back. It's 929. Well, services are being held to remember Meredith Portillo, the Bear County Sheriff's deputy who lost her life in a crash more than two weeks ago. Our Devin Carp is live outside of the Cornerstone Church where Meredith Portillo's friends, family and fellow law enforcement officers will say their goodbyes. Devin. Yeah, Jaffney, Steph, good morning. As you can see behind me, we've got deputy sheriffs from the Bear County Sheriff's Office, as well as other first responders getting ready for the service of Meredith Portillo. Now take a look at the flag that they just finished raising. Portillo was just 20 years old, working as a deputy for less than a year when she passed away just over two weeks ago. She started in September of 23 and graduated from the Detention Police Academy in January. Now Portillo was among three people who were killed after a wrong way driver crashed in into her car. Now we're going to be live streaming the service on our website and platforms at ksat.com, which will start at 10 o'clock. For now, I'm Devin Karp, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Devin. Let's get there with live cam. Bright and sunny. Wow, it's hard to see any clouds out there this morning. Yes, I tell you, it, it is definitely still hot, though. Oh, <laughs> you can't yeah. see that heat, but you can feel it. Uh, those temperatures are <laughs> definitely on their way up. And uh, we've already got feels like numbers in the 90s, guys. So it's only going to get worse this afternoon. I want to start with a picture here on KSAC Connect. Great shot this morning. It did look nice. You know, the sunrise was nice. It is a... Uh, not a horrible morning, although you know what I noticed about this picture, all the trash cans are out. It's, uh, it's my trash day too, and I completely forgot to put my trash can. <laughs> uh, and I thought, you know, maybe my wife would do it, and then she's like, I thought you were going to do it, and then oh, nobody no. did it. So, you know, it was one of those days. Next week. Uh, anyway, we appreciate the picture as always. It was a beautiful way uh, to start the day. Now it is going to end up uh, rather on the hot side. Uh, pollen count is in mold, pigweed, grass, all in the low category. No big deal there. And as we look at the forecast, 100s, where I think we end up, will be there around 4 or 5 o'clock this afternoon. Sky is staying mostly sunny, and that heat index will be anywhere from 100 to 103. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Let's look out there with Transguy this morning. Looking over at I-35 at Walsham, things are moving, so not too bad. I'm looking at the TxDOT website, and it looks like there's a collision over mm. A crash at Highway 90 and General McMullen. You don't see that on this, these cameras, but just be aware of that, that it looks like the, only the shoulder lane is blocked. So it's still moving, but probably a little slower in that area. But the cameras here look fine. Yes. 
This morning, the three American prisoners who returned home late last week have been discharged from Brook Army Medical Center. Evan Gershkovich, Al Su, Kermer Shafa, and Paul Whelan landed at Joint Base Andrews on Thursday night as a part of the prisoner swap with Russia. From there, they were flown to San Antonio, where they had medical evaluations at BAMSI. This morning, school districts across the state competing to draw the best and brightest teachers into the classroom. A new law aimed at putting veterans and first responders at the front of the classroom as teachers is a new tool in the toolbox. Well, this is one way that lawmakers hope to fill the teacher shortage gap. However, the efforts might have fallen a little short. Statewide, the Texas Education Agency reports that 46 veterans and two peace officers were hired under that new provision. The bill author says part of the problem is that the areas that they can teach are so narrow. And that's not enough. And has not done to, and not enough has been done to promote this chance to veterans and first responders. Northside ISD said they hired one person using this new law. Representative Matt Shaheen hopes more qualified service members and first responders get into the education field. We certainly can do a better job of promoting it. Uh, there's some things that we can do with respect to communicating. Uh, through our veterans organizations and like throughout the state of Texas. But I think we do need to take a look at the, at the scope. It's just too narrow. And quite frankly, there's a lot that our uh, military, uh, a lot of their experiences that they can share with these students in a learning environment, obviously, that would just be so beneficial to our students. So if you are a retired veteran or former law enforcement officer, here's a new career for you, your Act 2. There's talk about possibly expanding the bill to allow applicants to teach more than just career and technology classes. Meanwhile, a population surge is pushing one local school district to expand. Well, next week, when Medina Valley ISD heads back to class, hundreds of students will walk the halls of a completely new school named Silos Elementary. Learning and learning. I'm just excited to socialize and learn more. Back to school means new classes, students, and teachers. New class. And this year for Medina Valley ISD, it also means a new building. It's always a, a great feeling coming into a new campus. The addition will accommodate a growing population in this part of South Central Texas. It's a challenge to keep up. Next week, Silos Elementary will be the newest school to open in the district. But it's far from the last. Crews right now are building a new high school that's set to open in the coming years. We need to make, ensure that we have classrooms available for all of our kids. But based on our projections, we're going to we're anticipating on opening a campus per year. Data from MVISD shows over the last three years, the student body population has grown more than 10 percent each year. And one San Antonio based realtor says the housing numbers match Medina Valley's growth projections. It is incredible the growth that has happened. It's the price point. People are buying today because of the interest rates and what they can afford. Has this area just totally exploded over the last three years? Yes, it has. It has. It's getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> As school starts up for Medina Valley ISD next week, there's pride in this district. Medina Valley has been a, a, a one horse town for, for many years. And now, there are thousands of more people calling this place home. We're going to continue to add campuses and just get bigger and bigger. The superintendent says these projects are approved by voters through bonds. To read more about upcoming construction, you can head on over to KSAT.com. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. First day of school, still a few days away for most kids in our area. And getting your kids ready for school can be a very, very difficult process. If you need help with those school supplies, KSAT can help by scanning that QR code on the bottom of your screen. You'll find all the information that you need to know, including an entire web article dedicated to back to school events and giveaways happening right now until your child's first day of school. And get this, tax free weekend is this weekend, August 9th through the 11th. So get in while you can, Stephanie, you plan on going? Uh, maybe for a few more things, but I got most of my shopping oh, done already. Look at you. I'll see yeah. you, girl. <laughs> Educator of the Month, brought to you by First Mark Credit Union. And another reminder for you that we are continuing our Educator of the Month nominations for this upcoming school year. So each month, one special educator will be recognized for the work he or she does and will receive a $500 Visa gift card from First Mark Credit Union. And this isn't just for teachers. It could be a bus driver that's made a difference or a custodian worker or even a cafeteria worker, just anyone who is making a difference at your school. So go ahead and scan that QR code on your screen to nominate your favorite educator for a chance to win. 
And a new school year means a new edition of Science with Sarah. Our meteorologist Sarah Spivey is excited to do some fun new experiments with students. And if you'd like her to stop by your school, go ahead and scan this QR code to register. There you're going to find a form. You can fill that form out with your name. It will be entered in a random drawing. And if your name is picked for the fall semester, get this, Sarah will reach out directly to you by email. And by the way, Sarah will be out at the San Antonio Zoo tomorrow making slushies if you want to come out and say hi. Yeah, she has a lot of fun experiments. Um, she's done, uh, like, a, worked with a lot of different age groups. Yes. And, uh, and it's also fun when they have, like, the zoo helping out because the kids get to see, like, a new friend. Exactly. So I wonder who will be out with her tomorrow. <laughs> I love that. I yeah. love it. It'll be fun. Time now, 937 and 83 degrees for now. You're watching GMSA at 9. Debbie may no longer be a hurricane strength, but the Southeast is still racing for record setting rainfall in the coming days. We got those details next. Welcome back. It's 940. Well, there are records that Lavernia Independent School District did not want you to see. A financial arrangement between the district and a top administrator that kept him on the payroll for four and a half months after he was placed on leave. Definitely a mystery that our KSAT investigates team has been trying to get to the bottom of. It is a serious issue when the district is essentially giving away public monies and receiving nothing in return. Lavernia's superintendent declined a request to be interviewed about the decision to continue paying Duffick while on leave for well over four months. In an interview with KSAD in the fall of 2020, Cohn told us, quote, whether we like it or not, we have to tell the story for what it is and be completely honest, whether it's about finances or what a teacher did or what a superintendent did. It's about communicating. And again, case that investigates this school district secrecy tonight on the night beat. We also have the full story on our website on kset.com. And now to the flood emergency in the southeast, the remnants of Hurricane Debbie already. A deadly storm could now make history. Mm -hmm. People in the area are expecting two feet of rain in the coming days. Here's ABC's Andrew Dimbert for the latest. A days-long weather threat is unfolding right now for millions of people in the southeast. What's left of Hurricane Debbie is dumping historic amounts of rain up to 30 inches possible in some areas. The storm is expected to crawl across South Georgia, then stall off South Carolina. Charleston could get more than 20 inches of rain. It may be that this is the most water we've seen for a long time. Maybe. We don't know. So stay alert, stay tuned, and stay safe. South of Charleston, a reported tornado overnight damaging property in Edesto Beach. In Georgia, the mayor of Savannah issued a curfew, warning the deluge could mean, quote, obliteration for parts of the city. This type of rain hovering over us, coming with the intensity that they tell us that it's coming, uh, it's going to catch a whole lot of people by surprise. Debbie made landfall along the Gulf Coast of Florida as a Category 1 hurricane, leaving streets underwater and homes without power. More than a foot of rain fell in the Sarasota area, authorities rescuing hundreds of people from flooded neighborhoods. You can see members of the Florida National Guard in high water rescue vehicles going into neighborhoods like this that are flooded to rescue homeowners. Debbie is blamed for at least four deaths in Florida, including the driver of this truck near Tampa. Police say he lost control of his tractor trailer, the truck's cab then plunging into the water below. Meanwhile, one boater is telling his survival story. It's a washing machine, basically, is what it is in the Gulf. Nathan Thomas and his friend were rescued off Florida's Gulf Coast in 20-foot waves. He says the storm came quicker than expected, and they lost the sail on their sailboat. I knew that if the Coast Guard didn't get us, we probably had less than a 50% chance of surviving. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Fortunately, we're not having to deal with yes, that, Yes, right? I mean, we are We are lucky. We just we just have the heat, but, you know, mm -hmm. we still need to be careful. We interviewed a pediatrician yesterday who, I mean, of course, you know, we all know water is important. Yeah. But also reminded when you have little ones, like, you, you almost have to, like, uh, like it's out of sight, out of mind. You almost have to put the bottle of water in front of them just to, <laughs> as a reminder. Hey, when you because they're busy playing. Oh and, you know, yeah, you just forget sure, about that. About it. Uh, and even even when they're swimming too, that's another yes, reminder because I know a lot of people they right. don't they forget they forget because they're like I'm in the water, I'm fine. No, yes. you still need to drink water. Yes. Fill up the water bottle mm -hmm. and take it with you wherever you go. Uh, you'll want it uh, next uh, few days All with right. temperatures the way they are. Uh, we just saw Debbie. Uh, where, how it was impacting the southeast. I want to show you kind of the big picture and give you an over, overview of what's going on across the country. Uh, we've got Debbie still churning there across the southeast. 
Uh, some rain around South Carolina, North Carolina. This is where the heavy rain is going to be. That's where it's going to stay uh, because this thing's not moving very fast. I also point out that around Chicago, we've got a few storms. Uh, there's a boundary up here, and I think this is an area that could see some severe weather later today. Let's see where this orange color is here. On a scale of one to five, there's a risk of about a two for severe weather. And I point this out because this is going to affect the major metropolitan areas. So this could uh, mean that uh, there could be some flight delays. In fact, the FAA was just pointing this out. Not only do you have Debbie, but if you have storms that affect Chicago over to New York, this could be a problem for flights a little bit later this afternoon. So do check ahead if you're traveling today. High pressure for us is really in control and high temperatures are uh, jumping up as a result. Vegas and Phoenix, man, I feel sorry for those folks. It's always hot out there. It is, but these numbers have just been uh, really crazy this year. 112, uh, the forecast high in Las Vegas this afternoon, 109 in Phoenix. Here around uh, Texas, we'll be looking at triple digits too, just not that hot. Uh, and our 100 degree days, well, we could add to it today. We have 12 so far this summer, uh, well, late spring and summer. And, uh, you know, last year at this time we were at 40. So, yeah, we're doing better. Last year we totaled, we ended up with 75. We will not get there. There's just no way at this point, which is great news. Uh, we have about another month and a half left of uh, potential for these kind of numbers. And then we'll be into the fall, we'll start getting cold fronts and all will be well. Uh, temperatures this week, though, triple digits, a good bet basically each and every day. 102 Wednesday, 102 uh, Thursday, 103 on Friday. The average is 97, so this is a little bit above average, uh, but not into record range. The forecast heat index this afternoon uh, with humidity included uh, will be around 103 here in San Antonio, 105 Stinson, 105 Floresville. Uh, these numbers could be worse, and I think what happens during the afternoon, as I talked about earlier, the humidity drops off a little bit. Uh, so it's more of a dry heat once you get to say four or five, six o'clock in the evening. It's still hot, but uh, the heat index isn't just completely out of control. And I, I wanted to mention this uh, one more time. I know we talked a lot about this earlier this summer, but don't forget about the pups. I was uh, thinking about taking my dog for a walk yesterday, and then I thought better of it because uh, the asphalt uh, was probably getting pretty hot. It can get up to 140 when the air temperature is just 95. Uh, sidewalk can get up to 125 so the best thing you can do if you're going to go walk your dog and you're worried about this just uh, you know touch the uh, touch the ground with your hand and if it's too hot for your hand it's too hot for their paws uh, you can you know uh, try to get into the grass or uh, shady grass but even those temperatures are are pretty hot so uh, just be careful out there and as we uh, take a live look outside 83 at the airport 82 new Braunfels, 83 in converse 81 for bernie and Kerrville and our forecast calls for that ridge of high pressure to really kind of build in and uh, take hold of our forecast uh, next several days at triple digits, uh, not only for us, but for a large portion of Texas uh, going into the weekend. There is a weak frontal battery, though, that shows up Saturday into Sunday, and that may be just enough uh, to kick off a few showers and storms. Not a great chance, but the models are kind of hinting, hinting at it both days, Saturday and Sunday. So 102 Wednesday, 102 Thursday. 103 on Friday and look for that small chance of rain uh, Saturday and Sunday, but still still in the triple digits. Did you know that the asphalt and all that good stuff? Yes, that may be hot, but check out the turf. This, you know, dog parks have. Oh, yeah, even that then. is actually super hot, too. Uh, yeah. Whenever I would take Bo out because I think, oh, my gosh, let's go just chill out. Right. He would immediately lay down and I would oh. think that he's just sunbathing or something. Then I, one day I went out and I actually touched it, touched it and I was just like, oh, my God, it was yeah. very, very hot. So watch yeah. out for that as well. So do you I guess you try to either take uh, take Bo out earlier yes. or later in the evening. And he got some little bitty booty oh, shoes. Oh, I was going to ask yeah, you how them. Oh, that's good. <laughs> little I mean, shoes as well. It does help. I didn't think it was a thing, but it yeah. actually it does help. Yeah, it mm -hmm. does. Yeah. Well, speaking of the heat, let's look out at the hot zoo out hey. there. Looking out yeah. there with Zoo Cam, and uh, the flamingos enjoying right. the sun at this look point. Look at all that water back there, though. They got a they got a little yeah. cool space to go to if they need to. And now they're walking into the shade. They, <laughs> at first, they're like, I like the heat, and they're like, you know what? Yeah, no, I'm good. Too much. Let's, let's, you're right. You're right, Justin. They're they're, they're clearing <laughs> the the sun area. Definitely looking for that shade. Yeah, it's a it's a great day to go to the zoo. For sure, especially before school starts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, get those trips in while you can. Time now, 949 and 83 degrees for now. Have you ever wondered what your dog is trying to tell you with their barks and growls? Up next, we're going to tell you how you, we might be able to crack the code. 
Well, welcome back. It's 9.52. Well, a lot of us are best friends with our lovely pets. And while well, they are the best at conversation, pretty soon they could be. Mm -hmm. So using the power of artificial intelligence, we will soon be able to discover, discover and decode every bark, whine, and pant of our four-legged companions. Speak. Hi there. <gasps> In 2009, the movie Up showed us an animated dream where technology could help us finally interpret what dogs are trying to tell us. We've been essentially training neural network models. Well, apparently it only took 15 years for our reality to start catching up with science fiction. <gasps> cool! Now researchers at the University of Michigan, like Professor Radha Mihalcha here, are starting to use artificial intelligence to translate a bark. Can we tell just from the sound they make what is the situation they are in? <laughs> their team started by uploading human speech to build their quote unquote neural network and then using recorded situational vocalizations from about 70 dogs working with a team in Mexico. So far, Rada says their program has succeeded the most consistently with interpreting the breed of a dog and if it's feeling either <laughs> playful or <laughs> angry. On the other hand, interpreting a dog's age and definitely its gender has proven to be a little more challenging. Maybe because we didn't have enough data. Oh no. But let's be real, sometimes the concept of AI developing can seem terrifying. So uh, let's ask what you're probably wondering. How do you see this technology being helpful for people? If we think of benefit to humans would be in the sense of having now access to these other forms of intelligence, like for dogs, what they can learn to smell. Rada says with more data and nuance, maybe this program could help us interpret reports from canine units or from dogs who can reportedly detect cancer. Not to mention, perhaps we could also better diagnose dogs when we take them to the vet. In the future, I think there could be even more that we could learn. Now, we're still probably years away from a lot of that, but she says soon that they may need to crowdsource to receive audio clips from our dogs. I asked her to please keep us posted on that. Could be really fun because we're all just recording our animals all day anyway, so might as well contribute to science. In New York, for ABC News, I'm Danny New. That's anyway, a cool deal. I, I would like for your dog to talk to you in the morning. <laughs> My thing is, is that I'm okay with not hearing what he has to say sometimes. I bet he's just going to go on and on and on. But uh, yeah, that's pretty interesting technology. I can't wait to see what people actually learn about that. Yeah. Uh, we're getting ready for the annual case at Pig Skin Classic this year. Bernie will take on Piper. That's happening Thursday, August 29th at Piper Warrior Coliseum. And last look at the forecast. We're at 83 right now. We'll be up around 100 this afternoon. Uh, this this is going to be a theme, a vibe this week, if you will. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, 102 Wednesday, 102 Thursday, 103 Friday. I did put in some rain chances Yay. Saturday and Sunday. I mean, uh, oh it'll be goodness. few and far between. Uh, but heat <laughs> is going to be uh, the big story this week. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, we've got, a, as I said, another month or so left of this. And, We'll get out of it. Yeah. yeah. Well, the 20% is encouraging. I mean, we'll take that over no percent chance of that rain. That is true. Yeah. <laughs> that is we true. Look at the positive yeah. side of things. And it might be good, even if we don't get rain, we'll get some cloud cover. Boom. And that's always nice. Look at that I cup half full. See, that's, yes. I that's, love that. That's, that's just, <laughs> so looking forward the to the weekend. <laughs> yes. Thank you guys for joining us. Yes. Have a good day. We'll see you here at noon. <laughs>